If there are any among this people who should ever apostatize, prepare your backs for a good whipping. I have faith that the Constitution will be saved as prophesied by Joseph Smith. But it will not be saved in Washington. Yeah, this morning gets on. Yeah, apparently, people are abandoning the news. And so they're not aware of what's going on in the bigger picture of things. Most likely, a large number of people watched the debate and Biden's utter failure. And so now there's the debate over whether Biden should abandon ship and let somebody else step in. But it's just going to make things worse because of the plans that MAGA has been telling us they're going to do. And it would be stupid for people to claim that MAGA wouldn't really do it. They're just joking. They wouldn't cross that line. It's just political speech. <sighs> Did you forget when Trump was in the presidency? Now that we've learned that he rigged the election for 2016 <laughs> with just the one issue that finally he got convicted for even though he went out and denied at the debate I did not have sex with the porn star yeah you did yeah you did we all know it you got busted for it you're a convict first time in history for a lot of things the first president to run for presidency is a convict and we all know why he's still going to be running. He's not backing out. It's because he wants to overturn the conviction and seek revenge. He said so. And so for people to be in denial of this is very disgusting. And, and so for the most part, America is divided in half between those who are liberal versus those who are conservative. There is a third group of people who just never vote, realizing that this nation will not allow their vote to count, whereas the rest are led as sheeple by their party being used by them just as the Palestinians in Gaza use the people the women the children as sheeple for their ultimate final solution against Israel <coughs> and so we've seen and heard what Trump did the first four years. And people use that forgetting excuse to ignore the serious threat that he is. Because there are a lot of things he wanted to do that he was told, no, you can't do it. And it was his first time being president and there are a lot of things that he did in secret 
that we would go on to find out that he did, typically from the Russian press. knew what Trump had done, knew that they needed to be overturned if we were going to protect America, prevent further destruction. But the Democrats failed. Biden failed. Merrick Garland failed. They knew what they had to do. They chose not to do it. And thus gave aid and comfort to MAGA. They fed each other. This is the danger of a bipartisan government. Is that they're more interested in their own tribe than in the welfare of the nation for which the constitutional republic demands. And so it's disgusting to hear everybody talk about democracy and even a democratic republic. Find it in the Constitution. You won't. SCOTUS is not following the Constitution in their decisions. They're overthrowing the Constitution. They are not allowed to make up their own rules and laws by alternate interpretation of the Constitution or just flat, flat out disregarding it. And so the overthrow of Roe v. Wade was the overthrow of the 14th Amendment, Section 1. Has anybody even read it? Still, to this day, not a single member of the press, not a single government leader on the progressive or Democrat side ever call out that the Supreme Court justices overthrew the Constitution, violated it, raped it, burned it to the ground, let alone Section 3. Nobody involved on January 6th, leading up to it, and on the day, and even afterward. None of them are allowed to hold office. Ever. But, Democrats failed to do their job. And so as a result, Senator Lee ran in 2022. Now we have a president who's running for 2024 because the Democrats failed to do their job. And so we are told America will fall. If Trump wins, America falls. We know what he's gonna do. If you're black or colored, get out. That's what he's going to do to you. If you're trying to seek asylum, you're out. If you're a woman, you're only for sex now. You're out of business, out of government. You have no voice. You need to be a trad wife. That's the new rise. They're setting it up for it. You're supposed to be married to a guy to be impregnated, or you're supposed to be like the porn star to be used for sex whenever the guy wants it. No relationships, unless the guy wants one. You're not allowed to have an abortion, no contraception, no birth control. Nothing. And so, yeah, just like in Nazi Germany, girls were raped for the master race. They are returning to what existed during World War II in Nazi Germany. That's why they're neo-Nazis. They're resurrecting the Third Reich in America, 
We all know this. We see the we see the signs, we hear the words, we know it's coming. And the Democrats are failing America. <sighs> and so there's a a condition called judge shopping. That's where people search for a particular judge and that's why they pay attention to rulings of the judges so that they try to get their case with a certain judge rather than actually having a, a complaint that needs to be addressed by the courts and letting the process proceed. They specifically try to rig the court system in their favor. And at the lower levels, regardless of the ruling, the losing party always appeals. Well, for the most part, if there are lawyers involved. And it's a, an issue that they're pushing for more so lately than in the past, let's say that. And they, if the appellate court doesn't side with them, then they go up to the Supreme Court. And if the appellate court sides with them, the other side takes it to the Supreme Court. Nobody trusts the judicial system. They all go up to the Supreme Court for a ruling in their favor. And so we know very well, because it's already happened, that MAGA was responsible for setting up the conditions to get their justices in the Supreme Court, because this is their tactic, to push a lawsuit and if they lose, to get it pushed to their SCOTUS. So the SCOTUS would vote for them, in favor of them. This is a sabotage coup of America. January 6th was not an isolated incident. All the things they're doing are designed to overthrow the government. That's what Trump said. Do you not believe him? What did you think make America great again meant? That you wear on your foreheads. Revelation 13. I warned you. You don't listen. You don't listen. I had a guy who came to a video where I talked about Trump fulfilling the Book of Mormon prophecy. And he's like, what the hell is this? I don't understand. What's going on here? Why is Trump in the background? <laughs> it's the Book of Mormon. It's prophecy and revelation. It says so in the Book of Mormon. So what's prophecy? Predicting the future. The Book of Mormon is a prediction of the future. It's not about predicting the coming of Jesus. Because it's the learning of the Jews, not Christians. And so Revelation is the day and the hour of the future predictions. So 1 Nephi chapter 1. You see that it's in the learning of the Jews. So it's not literal history. It's a prophecy in Revelation. And then verse 4. Because it's not literal history. It's not talking about Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the first year. Which is 597 B.C. E. And... And so, when? When 
is it talking about? What is the future event going to take place? Verses 8 through 10, which comes directly from Revelation chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 5. In the Joseph Smith translation, they move verse 5 to verse 3 to be a part of 1 and 2. And you'll also notice verse 1 in the Joseph Smith translation. Sign in the heaven in the likeness of things on the earth. Sign in the heaven, day and hour revelation, things on the earth, prophecy, predictions of the future. Ta-da! <clears throat> and so there's the date that you're supposed to be waiting for, for the fulfillment of the prophecy of Zedekiah, king of Judah, put on the throne by a foreign government. Did it happen? Did you run the test? Did you want to find out if the Book of Mormon's true? Or did you just get a spiritual witness feeling that it's literal history true with Jesus? Where is Jesus? He's late. Three months late. Oops. And how do I know it's three months late? Revelation 19 verses 11 and 17. We just had it. It was the most watched event in all the world's history. And not a single person on the face of the earth except those who have watched my videos knew about it. We all around the whole world saw the sign together. And you do not understand the significance of that. So, yesterday, through Paul's website for me, I got a uh, comment by a person who claimed to be a liberal Mormon for 60 years. <clears throat> and they told me their sad tale with dealing with conservative Mormonism. That the church didn't protect them. And that was just last year, apparently. They've been in the church for 60 years and then finally last year, they got attacked. Now, the person was responding to the video from YouTube. It gets transferred over, thanks to the way Paul set it up. On Desnat, and the danger of Desnat. And I think that was the same video in which I immediately got a whole bunch of views right off the bat because of those of Desnat. <laughs> Who rushed to attack me and defend themselves for what they were doing. And so YouTube immediately stepped in and shut it off to hide it from Desnat. Not to protect me, just to protect the church from my getting attention. <clears throat> Regardless, some guy found it. And, or some female found it. Don't know, it was a gender neutral name. <laughs> and I couldn't tell from their comment whether they were male or female. <clears throat> but just like America, that requires people in government office to have an oath of office to be loyal to the United States Constitution, not their party. And thus they need to adhere to the Constitution, not their own will, 
for their agenda for America. But that's what's going on. <clears throat> and so likewise, Mormons, the Book of Mormon is the keystone of your religion. Nobody else is able to step forward and create a new doctrine for you to follow, even if they claim it's by Jesus. Especially if it's claiming to be by Jesus. That's your first big clue they're lying to you. That was clever, it rhymed. <laughs> Poetry of Travis Mangus. <laughs> and so <clears throat> let's go over some of this. Because Mormons are not getting it and they're purposely not wanting to get it. Because Liberal Mormons stay in the church and redefine Mormonism so as to avoid a faith crisis. And so, yeah, liberals are the ones more prone to be kicked out of the church or leave the church because of their liberal views. That's what this person did not seem to understand, despite being 60 years in the church and finally getting attacked last year. <clears throat> Whereas conservatives, such as Desnat, stay in the church, purposely ignoring the word to make up their own interpretation of Mormonism, to create a traditional culture of criminality and abuse of Mormonism. And this is a trap that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is causing to these conservative Mormons. And the conservative Mormons don't see it coming because they have to ignore the word in order to do what they do. And by ignoring the word, you ignore the warnings of the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith not to do this, but they ignore it, and so they do it. And when the consequences result, oops, now they're unhappy. They want to be able to do whatever they want to do and not be subject to the consequences. And the consequences aren't by other people. Consequences are caused by their actions. And this is the trap. And so once they get caught, then they fall into the faith crisis because they got caught. And so, like the Book of Mormon talks about, it's, it's the pride idolatry cycle. This was developed by a seminary instructor who was a part of creating the manuals because of his long time service in the seminary program and put his creation of the pride cycle in the manuals so that all of us get taught it when that lesson comes up. And it's false doctrine. It's what happens but it's not righteousness. That's the one fault of the pride cycle. He's assuming that after repentance, they're now righteous again. But they didn't repent. That's where he goes wrong in his creation. And so if you don't know the pride cycle, we'll review it for you. You have a righteous people following the word doing good to mankind. <clears throat> they then do wicked things, become wicked, so then fall. 
there's some kind of a destruction. The Lamanites come into war against them. They're put into bondage. You know, whatever the situation is. As if being wicked was a direct causal relationship. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And so then they say they're sorry and they pray, read their scriptures, go to church. And they're freed from bondage. <laughs> and so now all of a sudden they're righteous again. No. It is completely false doctrine. What the Book of Mormon is warning about has to do with following the iron rod, the Word of God, producing the results of following the iron rod. Ta-da! Line upon line, precept upon precept. What did you think that meant? You can't follow line upon line, precept upon precept, if all you're doing is a spiritual witness feeling. <clears throat> you have to go through the Book of Mormon and produce the results to find out if it's true. So like 1 Nephi chapter 1, prophecy and revelation, find the prophecy, then find the revelation. Now you need to search for the date of the revelation. And then once you know when it occurred, then you wait for it to happen to see what would result. Ta-da! Line upon line. Precept upon precept, prophecy and revelation upon prophecy and revelation. That's how I did it when I first learned about the total solar eclipse of America. My education taught me that this was anciently interpreted as a collapse of the government. So I knew what this meant. And so I rushed to finish the Paleo-Hebrew script decipherment, got that published and out of the way, and would later come back in Amazon, or Academia. It's free. But nonetheless, began searching the heavens for the other dates to come after it. See, with the Tetrad with Perry Packer and Scott, I went, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. <laughs> my education was correct, which was a branch off of my education. My, nobody knew of that process of the sun shall be darkened, moon turn to blood, stars fall from heaven, and Perry Packer and Scott bite the big one during the Tetrad. With Jewish holy days involved. Not even Chad Daybell understood it. He just assumed that Jesus had told him in his near-death experience <laughs> to prepare for his coming by murdering people who were zombies and then dissecting their bodies and taping them up and burying them in the backyard. Bastard. <sighs> He better get the death penalty. I think he did, didn't he? YouTube was attacking me during that time. And so, but yeah, the prop in the background, that right there on the air. Thank you to, uh, what's the name of Difficult Research. I think the channel name is called Difficult research. She emphasizes the spelling to difficult research. So, yeah, she was covering all of that in great detail because she's a relative. She's not Mormon. She doesn't understand Mormonism. And now all of a sudden she's finding out that her relative who was Mormon is a, an abominable murderer. How could a Mormon do such things? Well, 
who is a Danite? Let's find out. We're only 30 minutes in. <laughs> the majority of the people have already left. Church of Jesus Christ.org, Church History Biographical Center. Let's see if we got something here. I probably should have typed in Joseph Smith Papers. Uh, he was born in 1858, died in 1945, after World War II ended. They designate his gender as <laughs> okay. He came from Derbyshire, England. Uh, he was a part. Uh huh. Yep. He was converted by the Danites, who went to England with the wrong name of the church, and was involved in the Pioneer Company of uh, 1864 to from July 22nd to October 4th. So it was the William S. Warren company that he came on. And so he's already been indoctrinated incorrectly. He thinks the church is Christian, he thinks the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ, he thinks the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the name of the church. So, yeah, he's not a Danite. Uh, it's conversion by the Danites. And I don't say who. Draper. His mother is a Mary Draper. Interesting. There's our Drapers. That's where they come in. Interesting. So, see? You can find out origins if you know how to do your research. So, not of the Danites but converted by the Danites into the false doctrine and so sabotaged the trap, the conservative trap that I talked about. This is part of that trap, that they think that they are right with the misinformation that they've been given and they go forward and that sets them up. Church ain't supporting them. Monson was the one who triggered his uh, faith crisis. Because he came out and, and said, this is it. This is the sign. Yeah, it's a sign we're going out of business. Janine. Sorry about the four eyes thing. <laughs> that was awesome. Awesome. Number five. Awesome. Well done, guys. Well done. Bill Murray. Oh my god. I just... <laughs> In his old age, he still got it. <laughs> and I'm liking Egon's daughter. I'm liking this transition that they're doing with her. That's well done. Not too sure about the family business thing, but it involves her, so fine. <laughs> and so, it doesn't matter whether you're liberal or conservative. Yeah, I could have ended any time. <laughs> if you're not following the Book of Mormon, you're wrong. And so, there are certain Doctrine and Covenants passages 
that appear to go against the Book of Mormon. <clears throat> and so, uh, what would be the first one? Uh, we could do section 119 first, I guess. See, so section 115 requires knowing the Joseph Smith papers to figure that one out. That that's a forged document. But well, and Adam on Diamond in section 116. You need to know the Joseph Smith papers and the Danite plot to destroy America in the latter days, beginning with 1 Nephi chapter 1. But uh, section 119, tithing. Verse 2 Tithing is for the priesthood. And for the debts of the presidency. This is called priestcraft. Plain and simple. Money to the priesthood, to the presidency, which is the priesthood, but priesthood is lowercase. Presidency is uppercase. This is priestcraft. And yet they tell us that we're a lay ministry. Because our bishops, elders, quorum presidents, high priest group leaders that used to exist that now are extinct, and stake presidents in the high council of the stakes, don't get paid. They have to work or be retired. Which nowadays you can't retire, you're forced to work until you're dead. Don't see that as a problem. And so yeah, I should have brought up about the homeless being banned by SCOTUS. Because they're setting it up. Just as the church is setting things up to get their kingdom back. Tithing is this financial process to get their kingdom back. The whistleblower exposed this and Nelson confirmed him. Yeah, he's right. So what? <laughs> we want our kingdom back. Religious freedom. And again, Mormons don't understand as conservatives that if you think, yeah, we need our kingdom back. Religious freedom. Well, okay, you overthrow the government this year by voting for Trump. <clears throat> and then are you expecting Trump to bow the knee to Nelson? Because he's going to live forever. He's a zombie. You know, that's Chad Daybell who's supposed to assassinate him as a zombie. Trump's going to demand that Nelson bow the knee to him, to pay him like a crime boss, you know, like tithing is from section 119. <laughs> Trump will not allow anybody to subject him to them. He's president. And so, yeah, he'll want to work with dictators, but all businesses must conform to him. Did you not pay attention when he was president? With Bezos. He purposely was sabotaging Amazon to get Bezos to conform and comply and bow the knee to him. 
the postal service. Bow the knee to me, or I will ruin you. And that sort of restored Bezos. Bears ears. What did you think that was for? It was for uranium. It was for Putin. The whole spat with Rocket Man. Little Rocket Man. No, that was so that Trump could justify building up a nuclear arsenal. He wanted to nuke us. Because we didn't bow the knee. Are you really going to be that dumb to think that he won't do it? Just because he was told no the first time. And so, yes, if he becomes president, he will demand that Utah bow the knee to him. He'll let the church run the state of Utah. He won't care. But they must bow the knee to him. And if the church betrays him, he'll nuke us. Oh, hey, that's a prophecy. The abomination of desolation. But it will be next year. Do you see the danger we're in? Do you see the trap that the church is putting you in? And so homeless are now banned by SCOTUS. They failed to pay tithing here in Utah, so now they're homeless. They apostate anti Mormon, anti Christ corridors. You are unproductive, you need to repent, get a job to support a family. And needs to pay a sufficient amount. They don't care about the system that sabotages you. That is increasing the number of homeless in Utah. They don't care. They demand you pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and you can't. And so they punish you for being poor. Zoramites, remember? <clears throat> They're setting this all up on purpose. And so, when Trump takes over, or the federal government falls with the Civil War because Trump lost, what's going to happen? If there's no federal government, what will happen? No Social Security for the elderly, or the homeless, or the disabled. No SSDI for those who paid into it. Homeless. These are people who cannot get a job. That are on government benefits because they cannot get a job. Homeless. And now the Supreme Court has said, in advance of the coming war, the coming fall of the federal government, being homeless is a crime. And so now, if you've not heard from our city leaders, the, the woman, oh, what's her name? I'm thinking Mendenhall, but I don't think she's a Mendenhall, is she? last year when the church released the Danite ledger <laughs> supporting section 119 <laughs> oh that was hilarious that was a big event I was wearing the white shirt at the bedside oh my god
and so yeah, we are in great danger by not adhering to the Constitution. Likewise, Mormons, this is a violation of the Book of Mormon, Second Nephi, chapter twenty-six. No priestcraft and other passages that say if you use priestcraft, you'll bring upon you utter destruction. And so the fall of the government, Third Nephi, chapter seven is because of the secret combinations using priestcraft with the great and abominable church. They're in on it together at that point. Elam in chapter 6. The great and abominable church sided with the secret combination. Began working together. And thus finally succeeded in 3rd Nephi chapter 7 pay attention to what the words in the Book of Mormon are and run your test to find out if it's true as prophecy and revelation. This is it. It's coming. We already know if you'd only run the test. And so yes, this is a complete violation. This is not by Joseph Smith in Far West Missouri, July 8th 1838. That didn't get published until 1844 by Brigham Young. Was he authorized to lead the church? Nope. He doesn't have authority to take over leadership. And so, his change in administrative succession needed to reinforce him becoming the successor of Joseph Smith. Just as all the other branch offs who likewise didn't follow the proper succession from section 107 verse 22. The Melchizedek priesthood were supposed to gather and vote for three presidents, not one and two counselors. Three didn't happen. Authority is gone. The keys of the president, gone. Brigham Young only has the keys to preach. That's it. Peter, James, and John is to preach. That's it. Peter did not have the keys for the whole church. But Jesus gave it to him when he said that upon this rock I will build my church. No. It was upon a seer stone. Not Peter. <laughs> it's not literal history. It's prophecy and revelation. Seer. Joseph got it right in the John version. <sighs> Plus, you didn't even bother to read Acts chapter 15. Jacob took over the church, not Peter. <laughs> not literal history. <sighs> you gotta know the learning of the Jews so that you get your interpretation right. And so, section 132. Polygamy. This is more devious because Brigham Young purposely removed Joseph Smith's monogamy and put in section 131 in advance of it gutting it so that all you see is In the celestial glory, there are three heavens or degrees. In the highest, in the order to obtain the highest, a man must enter into this holy priesthood, meaning the new and everlasting covenant of marriage. Polygamy or monogamy? If he doesn't, if he does not, he cannot obtain it. He may enter into another, but that is the end of his kingdom. He cannot have an increase. No man can be saved in ignorance. 
All spirit is matter. Bodies are purified. We'll see that it is all matter. It's all section 132. <coughs> the principle and doctrine of having many wives and concubines. Prepare your heart to receive and obey the instructions that I'm about to give unto you. For all those who have this law to revealed unto them must obey the same. I reveal unto you a new and everlasting covenant of many wives and concubines. And if ye abide not that covenant, then ye are damned. No one can reject this covenant and be permitted to enter into my glory, the highest kingdom. Do you see the damage Brigham Young did? No, because you didn't go to the Joseph Smith papers to see the rest of section 131, which was Joseph Smith talking to Benjamin Franklin Johnson, which I don't know why he left that out. Benjamin Franklin Johnson is also involved in other church history that we do get taught. And his one wife, saying that his marriage to his one wife will get him into the celestial kingdom. So this goes against Joseph Smith and goes against the Book of Mormon because the Book of Mormon six times says no polygamy, evil, bad, no touchy. And yet the church is so obsessed with porn. Do not see the trap they're trying to set for you. You can't have any thoughts. You can't do anything about it. You can't do solo. You can't look. Nothing. You are a sinner and an evil person. You must pay to be worthy, which means nothing sexual. And so thus you pay, and you can only produce babies, that's what they want you to do, but in the 80s there was a problem. You have to pay to get married. And in case you didn't realize, women in the church used to have to wait for a man to marry them. And so if nobody liked them, they would be forced to pursue a career, and thus an education, waiting for their man. So as much as girls go to BYU to get an MRS degree, if men don't like them, don't want them, they're forced to go into the career field. But the church doesn't want you to do that. They want arranged marriages for polygamy. Nelson changed the law of chastity in 2019. You are now supposed to practice polygamy. You are now supposed to obey. You cannot reject it. You will not be exalted. So how many of you conservative Mormons, if you're still listening, are obedient? Do you not see the trap? By not being obedient and marrying other women to add to your harem, you are wicked. You're not obeying. And you're pushing other people to obey. And you're not obeying. And so when the nation falls and the church gets their kingdom back are you obedient nope and so you will be punished you have rejected the commandments you have rejected the temple covenant path and so the church needs slaves because of your disobedience, you get designated as a slave. Whereas, the women will be arranged 
to the priesthood holders. And Nelson has dropped it down to 11 years old. Arizona, by trying to be obedient to the church, lowered it to the Civil War era of 10 years of age, but then they were forced to reverse it. <laughs> because of the scandal of the Mormon and Carrie Lake. <laughs> and so, the person who commented talked about how I... Was it them or was it somebody else? Because I don't associate it with them. Somebody else... I can't remember the, where I got this from. Somebody else was saying that it could have been a YouTube comment talking about needing to marry uh, 18 or 19. Maybe it was the person online. But it was in a monogamous situation of marrying somebody young. I think it was 19 years of age or something like that to get married at 19. I can't remember exactly, but no. Mm -mm. Church is going into the child. If you're old enough to bleed, you're old enough to breed. The white supremacist Christian nationalist poetry when I was a little kid by my peers and I didn't understand. Bleed? What? <laughs> Why are little girls bleeding? <laughs> I didn't get taught sex ed. I know nothing of this. I'm watching all these TV commercials for feminine hygiene products, especially down there, and I have no clue what it's about. I don't understand. And I don't dare ask anybody. It's a sexual thing. <laughs> My peers humiliate people sexually on purpose. And then they would grow up to get worse in high school. And then they'd go to college, get worse. And then they'd go into the job market and be worse. Because nobody locked them up. And now they're in positions of power and trust across this nation. Restoring the Third Reich in America. So, but yeah, it was just follow the Book of Mormon. That's all you had to do. It's not about liberal or conservative. There's no way to interpret this any other way liberally. This is polygamy. It says so. You can't interpret it any other way. But the Book of Mormon, very clear. Let's go over it. Second Nephi, chapter 26. Forbidden this thing. Here it is. Verse 29, he commandeth, do you know what a command is? Gonna redefine it? Oh, it's a guideline, it's a suggestion, it's advice, it doesn't need to be obeyed. <laughs> that there shall be no priestcrafts. How complicated is that? And in case you don't know what priestcrafts are, he defines it for you. Priestcrafts are <laughs> that men preach and set themselves up for a light unto the world that they may get gain and praise of the world and neglect the people. The welfare of Zion. Zion is the people. It's not the buildings, it's not the administration, it's not the, the wealth, it's the people. And so, reinforcing it, behold, the Lord 
hath forbidden this thing. Section 119 is forbidden by the Book of Mormon God. <laughs> but Brigham Young's God, claimed to be by Joseph, says, yep, we're practicing polygamy. We're practicing priestcraft. Yeah. This is not complicated. You don't pick and choose what you want to believe in. You can't say, well, monogamy, not polygamy, but priestcraft, not no priestcraft. You can't do that. Either the Book of Mormon is true, or it's not. And by choosing the church over the Book of Mormon, you say the Book of Mormon is not true. Not complicated. The prophets are going against the church, against the Book of Mormon against Joseph Smith. They are forging documents to blame Joseph, to justify it, when it goes against the Book of Mormon. 1838? No. Joseph Smith didn't change. He didn't change the name of the church. Section 115 is a forged document, but you need to read the words of the Joseph Smith papers to figure it out. His 1838 history is your big clue. Because there you see that Willard Richards tried to cover it up and hide the original wording by putting in Jesus in the name of the church. Thus a violation of section 115. Joseph Smith did not rename the church. Joseph Smith didn't do anything that this church claims he did. You're not caught on to that? It's called lying ex faux liberals. You know the church is lying to you, and yet you believe their lies. You can't do both. Either the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is lying, and you therefore cannot trust them for anything they tell you. You have to go back and do your own research of church history to find the truth. And the Joseph Smith papers are there for you to do so. Or, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is true, and that they're not lying. <laughs> and Jesus can change in the Book of Mormon time. Yeah, no priestcraft. But now, under Brigham Young, yeah, priestcraft. <laughs> no! You're getting fooled. There's a proper administration structure. Only Joseph had the keys for authority. Nobody else. So when he dies, nobody else has authority. So you have to follow the words for his proper succession. Nobody did. Boom. Now the default of prophecy and revelation. The one mighty and strong. The man like Moses. Emmanuel. The Mormon. He's the one you look for. And how will you know him? fruit. He will have the gifts of prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. Nelson doesn't have them. He doesn't claim them. He claims titles. He denies prophecy and revelation. It's not him. He's the leader of the Great and Abominable Church. What is the name of the leader of the Great and Abominable Church in the latter days? It's in the Book of Mormon. Do you believe it? 